Well, good morning, boys and girls. It's Uncle Aaron again, and thanks for joining me for today's Bible Zoom video. Today, we're going to get started with our action memory verse, followed by the Bible story time, and then we'll finish with a Bible Zoom praise song. Are you ready to get started? Okay, here we go. Our action memory verse is from the book of Isaiah, chapter 61, verse 1. And it says, The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me, because the Lord has anointed me to bring good news to the poor. He has sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives, and the opening of the prison to those who are bound. So that's a really long action memory verse, isn't it? I'm going to show you some actions in a minute, but I want to explain to you what this means. So it says, The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me. The Lord has anointed me to bring good news to the poor. And that's exactly what Jesus did. It also says, He sent me to bind up the brokenhearted. Now, what does that mean? So binding up the brokenhearted means to, if someone has a wound, we... We, we bind it up, we heal it, okay? And so that's what Jesus does. He comes to heal those of us with broken hearts. And it says to proclaim liberty to the captives. Now, liberty is freedom. And someone who is a captive, they're like a prisoner. They're like a slave. So Jesus has come to tell us that we can be free from our sin. He's come to set sinners free. And finally, it says the opening of the prison to those who are bound. Now, you and I might not be in prison. I hope we're never in prison. But the message that Jesus is saying is that he came to set sinners free. Because when we are stuck in our sin, we have no hope. We need a Savior to come and rescue us from our sin. And that's what Jesus did. He came to rescue sinners. So now let's look at it and do it with some actions. Are you ready? Okay, here we go. So our action memory verse is from the book of Isaiah, chapter 61, verse 1. So do it along with me. The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me, because the Lord has anointed me to bring good news to the poor. He has sent me to bind up the brokenhearted. So we're going to make a heart the brokenhearted. And to proclaim liberty to the captives. And the opening of the prison to those who are bound. Did you get that? Let's do it one more time. Isaiah chapter 61 verse 1. The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me. Because the Lord has anointed me to bring the good news to the poor. He has sent me to bind up the brokenhearted and to proclaim liberty to the captives and the opening of the prison to those who are bound. Last week's video was called Jesus Raised Lazarus. Let's see what happens in this week's video. Be strong. God is strong and he will give you strength. Paul wrote these words in a letter to the church at Ephesus. Paul was in prison in Rome and he knew from experience that the Christian life was not an easy life. In fact, the Christian life is like a battle. The battle is difficult and it is not a battle against other people. The battle is against evil. Paul told believers how to fight. Put on the full armor of God, he said. It will help you stand up against the devil who is trying to trick you. Paul wrote about the importance of being ready for battle. He said that God gives us what we need to stand strong against evil. Evil is strong, but God is stronger. These are the pieces of God's armor. First, truth is like a belt around our waist. We know what is true because God has told us about himself in his word. Truth can stand up against lies. Second, righteousness is like armor on our chest. 
God gives us righteousness when we trust in Jesus. Righteousness is doing the right things for the right reasons. Third, Paul said, be ready with the gospel like sandals on your feet. What God has done for us in Jesus is good news. We must always be ready to tell others the gospel. Fourth, faith is like a shield. We should take it with us wherever we go to help protect ourselves from the evil one's attacks. This evil one, the devil, wants us to doubt God and believe lies. God gives us faith to help us trust in him and obey him. Finally, Paul said, salvation is like your helmet and God's word is like your sword. A helmet protects your head. We should remember that God has saved us. A sword helps us fight off enemies. God's word, the Bible, is a strong sword. The Bible tells us what is true and the Holy Spirit helps us do what it says. Paul told believers to be ready to fight a spiritual battle every day. People and powers who are against God will be against us too. But Jesus died and rose from the dead. He had victory over evil. We can fight the battle against evil knowing Jesus already won the war. So boys and girls, sometimes we think if we just do the right thing, if we just live and try to be the best person and try to do as God has instructed us, we think if we just do those things, then it's all gonna work out and life is gonna be easy. Well, the truth is, that isn't true at all. And sometimes when we live for God, there are many difficult things that we face because we live for God. Now, before you get discouraged, just know that God is always with us no matter what, and we should always try to please and obey him. But if we look at the life of Paul, Paul was in prison just because he was doing the right thing and living for God. So that's a clear example that even when we do what's right, sometimes life is difficult. And sometimes things that are unfair or really upsetting happen. But we have to do what's right and trust God no matter what. So the reason we go through difficult things sometimes is because of sin. Sin is a curse on the world and the world is broken. It's not the way that God originally made it. Sin has messed everything up and that's why we go through difficult things. So keep trusting God, keep doing the right thing, but know that when things go wrong, it's not because God has left you. It's not because you're not doing the right thing necessarily. It's because of sin and the fact that we live in a broken world. So life sometimes can feel like a battle. And sometimes we battle against the things that we're going through that are really difficult. But the main battle that we're going through, the ultimate battle, is that life is a battle between good and evil. And we know that Jesus has overcome the evil in the world and that ultimately good will win out. But while we're in this world, we face this battle between good and evil. And so Paul was instructing the church there that we need to make sure that we are fighting with the weapons that God has given us. And that doesn't mean that we're physically fighting people, that we get a sword or a shield and actually go in, into war and fight people like that. That's not what he was saying. He was saying that we fight with the spiritual weapons that God has given us. So the weapons that we fight with in this battle against good and evil, in the spiritual war that we are facing, are things like truth, righteousness, salvation, the gospel, the Bible, God's word, and prayer. Those are the weapons that we use in the battle that we're in. So boys and girls, I wanna remind you that even though we're in this battle, God is always with us and Jesus has already won the war. Boys and girls, it might be a little confusing. You might say, well, Uncle Aaron, didn't Jesus already defeat Satan? And that's absolutely true. He did defeat Satan. And the ultimate defeat of Satan was when Jesus died on the cross and rose again from the dead. And he conquered death and he overcame the power of sin and Satan was defeated once and for all. So it is true. Jesus already defeated Satan. So you might wonder, why is there still this battle between good and evil going on? Well, number one is that God is always in control. So even though it may look like there's still a battle that um, is, is sometimes we're not sure how it's turning out, 
we can know that God is in control and He has the final say and we know in the end that He will wipe away all the evil and Satan will be locked away forever one day. But it's a little bit like this. I was watching a basketball game a few years ago and the game was won by a certain team and the game was decided, it was all over. But the team that lost got really upset at something and they actually started fighting physically after the game. It was a really bad situation and we should never do that. If we lose a basketball game or something like that, we should be a good sport and just accept it. But in this situation, even though the game was decided and the team had lost, they decided that they weren't gonna go without a fight and they caused a really bad scene and had a huge fight that just was really terrible to watch. So it's a little bit like what Satan is doing. Satan has already lost. It is final, it is decided, he has lost. There's no way that he can win. But he's not going down without a fight and so he's trying to cause as much trouble as he can before he's locked away forever. But we also need to understand that God has a purpose that he is using. Even when Satan is doing evil and bad things, God is able to use those in order to bring about some good, which is hard for us to understand, but it's just true and that's how God works. Now, the other thing is that God is being patient. So while he's allowing things to go on, he is trying to call as many people to repentance, as many people to turn away from their sin and to turn to God so that they can go to heaven and be with him forever as well. So that is why we see some of the things that are going on. It shouldn't discourage us. It should remind us that God is working everything out in his perfect timing. And the reason he lets some things go, go on is because he wants people to have the time to turn to him. But boys and girls know for sure that God has already defeated Satan once and for all. All right, boys and girls, it's time for our Bibles and Praise song. The song that we're doing today is called Stand Firm. Now, we've been talking about this battle between good and evil and how we live in a broken world where sometimes even when we're doing the right thing, we go through difficult times. So this song reminds of us of that. It says that the storms of life may push and pull. And that's not talking about storms like hurricanes. It's talking about the difficult things that we go through. So we need to know that we can stand firm and trust God through everything that we go through. So let's think about that as we sing this song, Stand Firm. Life will push and pull. We will. 
Well, boys and girls, before we close in our prayer time, I want to remind you if you have any questions at all, I'd love to hear from you. So you can email me at the email address below, but make sure you get mom or dad's permission first. Let's pray. Dear God, I thank you that you have overcome evil and that we don't need to be scared of it, that we can trust you and we can know that you're always with us. But I pray, God, that we would use the weapons that you have given us in this battle between good and evil and that we would um, trust in you and that we would trust in the salvation that you have saved us, that we would use your gospel to share the good news with people about Jesus and that we would read your word and trust in the Bible to be the thing that guides us and gives us comfort and gives us wisdom and that we would pray to you and trust you in every situation we go through. We ask all this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Boys and girls, thank you so much for watching today's video. And remember, people reject Jesus because all people are born as sinners, and some people would rather please themselves than obey God. I'll see you next week.